Good evening. It's um, good to be in a room full of intellects and thinkers and students who are uh, our leaders of tomorrow and uh, today. And um, I'm excited to be here. My name is Steve Drippin. Um, I work with the city of New Haven and I work with the uh, youth department. So I'm very much involved with, uh, with the youth in the city. That's been a strong uh, passion of mine uh, next to my other passion, which is probably writing and uh, hoping I can always merge those through the arts and uh, using that to impact our kids in the city. So it's good to be here and um, I'm, I'm fortunate to be with you and I'm hoping to learn as much from you and um, facilitate this as, as best as possible and I'm excited to hear these uh, thoughts that come out from this forum. Um, so let's get this uh, started. We strongly agree with the words of Dr. Martin Luther King which said that we are not a race of blacks or whites, but we are one race, which is the human race. So the human race is how we would like to define what racial identity is, which is everyone being human beings, number one. The second part that we've identified when looking at racial, discrimination, racial identity is how when we're younger, we all identify as human race, but as we start to get into our adolescent years, we start to say, I'm black, I'm white, I'm Muslim. So with looking at racial identity, they say that our world experiences help to shape that from us going from the human race to how we identify ourselves. I have to say, and friends of mine, friend, my friends and I talk about all the time, when we get angry young folks, we have to realize that 50 years ago, you weren't even born. 50 years ago, some of your parents weren't even born. So the kind of visceral reaction we had 50 years ago, the anger that drove us to make some things happen, even here in Southern Connecticut, guys are not experiencing that because much of what you've walked into, the groundwork for what you're able to do was laid 50 years ago by folks who were on control. So it's a whole different ballgame out there. You ain't it. You're not as bad as you were. You're not as focused as you were. You still want the same things, but you're much more bad. And that's going to change. When you step out your house and you said certain things, you were like, you were a kid. Nowadays, everyone in this room, when you graduate, when you ask to leave Southern or leave UNH or leave Yale, when you speak to your mom, you're leaving as a man. Mm. So when we talk about, so if you know me, I've spoken to you about this. So when I put a suit on, I can walk into certain places, but I can't speak my mind because I know that I can't help other brothers and sisters get in because of how people are going to look at me. And if they think that that's how I look or that's how I act, then I close the door for you. So if we have that whole entire room painted, we're there for the walk on it because as soon as we start to walk, people start to think this is something that we can't afford to be today. So until we come up with a plan that allows us to make sure we can I guess to kind of encapsulate it all, I'm proud about our race because we're still here. In spite of the good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifference, we're still here. I'm proud that I'm able to stand in front of young adults who are paving that way, who are going to be making that difference. Oftentimes, I am presented with a whole lot of negative information about my own people. And I fight every day against it. But you guys are my breath of fresh air. When I can come in and know that, you know what, there's still a remnant of us. There's still that talent intent. Let me kind of use that, phrase that. There's still that temp 
that's going to make a difference. And I appreciate it. So I'm proud because we're still here.